Well, I guess it's only fitting now. I mean, Trevor talked about his favorite Nintendo franchise. I might as well talk about mine. Donkey Kong. Yeah, a pretty cliched choice, I, I know, but I mean, come on, dude. The games were awesome. The arcade classics, the Donkey Kong Country games. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, hardcore DK fans. Those are the only ones I really seem to enjoy playing. Not saying that there's any bias towards it. It's not like I grew up in the 90s or anything, or the 80s, because, I mean, I'm, I'm like 20 years old. Uh, of course I wasn't born in the 90s. But at the same time, I don't know what it is about the new direction Donkey Kong's taken these days and only making okay games or just making some very weird, weird decisions and titles in the past, like, two decades or so. And, quite frankly, it's kind of depressing to see. It's almost like Nintendo really just didn't know what the hell to do with DK, or Rareware for that matter, once they got to the new age of 3D video game making. And I might as well just talk about that a little bit. So, we'll talk about Donkey Kong. Start off, well, I mean, I don't even think he needs any introduction, but for those few who probably don't know who he is, well, he was one of the very first video game characters to ever raise the stardom. He starred in a 1981 game called Donkey Kong, where he plays the role of a King Kong-type monster that kidnaps a damsel and has to be rescued by a carpenter? Yeah, very weird game when it came out. And if it does feel a little jumbled together, well, that's because it was supposed to be a Popeye game with Pluto in the role of Donkey Kong, Olive Oil in the role of the character Pauline, and Popeye as Jumpman. However, above all odds, this game was a smash hit. Everybody wanted to play it. Everybody ended up playing it. Everybody loved it. And, oh yeah, Kate, with that, a bunch of sequels and a bunch of really awful ports and this weird commercial. I'm Donkey Kong Jr. and that's my papa. I'm trying to save him and boy do I need your help. Uh, good times when I first discovered this after work. And honestly, as a kid, I always only played Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Although I did play Donkey Kong 3 a long time ago as a WarioWare micro game. But after a while, Donkey Kong seemed to have kind of gone on the wayside when Mario suddenly took the stardom on his own, starting with Mario Bros, and even more so with Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And Donkey Kong, other than a few ports on the NES, never really got any new games aside from Donkey Kong Math. Yeah, got to that point. Well, it wasn't all doom and gloom forever. The company WareWare was then commissioned by Nintendo to reboot the entire Donkey Kong franchise. And I mean, reboot. New characters, new environments, and a brand new art style and design of the main character, aptly titled Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, here we go. High paced platforming action, jumping on enemies, rolling in wheelie carts, blasting out of barrels, hitting concussions to the crocodiles, or the Kremlings actually, don't worry, I know the actual names. Oh man, Indiana Jones style hijinks as well with all the boulders and shit. Oh man, it's so freaking cool. Keeps you on the edge of your toes every five seconds. It's all, and, and I can't imagine the crazy aesthetics and the crazy environment. It's so awesome to see with all that primitive CGI completely compressed in a Super Nintendo graphic. Oh my god, it's so cool. And the story, well, I mean, King K. Rool steals a bunch of bananas, Don Kong goes back to get bananas with his buddy Diddy Kong. Yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. And I can't tell you enough how much I love this game. It has everything I want in a video game. Lush environments, lovable main characters, and a bunch of snarky comments as well. I mean, come on, Cranky Kong is a freaking beast. You could get along really well with a Statler and Waldorf, I'll admit. Oh my god. Now that's a force we don't want to ever see come to life. And the amazing control schemes is so satisfying to perform, especially after months of trial and error through some of the harder levels. And once you get them down, you feel like a fucking master. It's like performing acrobatics, it's fucking cool. And of course, the sequels, Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3, are much the same Donkey Kong fare but with even cooler level designs, even crazier characters, and even more amazing musical scores. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to talk about that. One of the things that make Donkey Kong stand out and truly brings these environments to life is the amazing musical score. 
everyone else who talks about the DKC games have definitely gone on record to completely make it apparent how amazing the soundtracks are. And, um, well, I still have yet to use them for a video here on Media Mementos, but, I mean, maybe it will be for another day. Who the hell knows? But I'll save you the time and not play them at the moment. You could just listen to them in the background while you can. And unfortunately, at least for me, this will be the first and unfortunately only time Donkey Kong will be at his true peak. Because... The Nintendo 64 was just around the corner, and of course, almost all the major Nintendo franchises were making the leap to 3D. Mario, Zelda, Star Fox, etc. And Donkey Kong was of course on the shortlist to have his own 3D adventure on the new spankin' console. And of course, Rarer was still heavily involved, in fact, they were the devs. And, as a result, we got Donkey Kong 64. I think Square Eye Jack talked about this game in pretty good detail and pretty much sums up exactly what I felt about this game as well. I will just leave it at, the soundtrack is very underwhelming for a Donkey Kong game. It doesn't have that same sporadic energy and adventurous quality that Super Nintendo games had. And I'm sorry, but the environments really leave a lot to be desired. I understand it was the Nintendo 64, and obviously didn't have the most lush environments, but look at the other games Rareware was making at the time, Conquer and Banjo-Kazooie. Hell, even Diddy Kong Racing has a lot more liveliness to it than this game ever hopes to have. It's all muddy and hazy and very bleak, and not in a good way. It feels like a really bad Resident Evil game. And that is definitely not a compliment for me, because I don't like those games very much either. One thing I can say is that it has the DK rap, and you know, that that's it. Otherwise, it's just kind of a waste of time. And with that, we go into the unfortunate transition into the GameCube era. Donkey Kong had some potential here. And since Rareware was still with Nintendo, completely adamant on making the jump to the GameCube at the time, there was a racing game called Donkey Kong Racing that was supposed to come out, which involved the characters riding on a bunch of animals familiar into the franchise. But it was cancelled once Rare got purchased by Microsoft in 2002. And of course, with that came an extensive retooling for a game that was called Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, which, for whatever reason, took way too long to get out and wouldn't be released for the Wii, but I'm getting ahead of myself. And all we got in the GameCube Barrel was a very bland fighting game? It's a combo beat em up deal, and it's not very fun. And Donkey Konga, which is kind of a guilty pleasure for me, if not for the game dude's hilarious reaction to this shit. Look at me, I'm Donkey Kong! Uh, never gets old. But aside from these odd endeavors, no major Donkey Kong game was released, and it seemed like it was gonna be the same way for the Wii when Barrel Blast came out. A very janky, very hard to control racing game where the Donkey Kong characters are flying around on jetpacks. Sounds like a fun idea, and does kind of borrow a little bit from the cancelled aviation-based racing game Diddy Kong Pilot. It's just the execution that didn't do very well, and of course the game was not received very well, fans aren't particularly fond of this, and it seemed like doom and gloom for Donkey Kong for this new era. Aside from having the entire gang Yes, the entire gang show up in Mario Super Sluggers, which I'll admit, as a kid, was freaking awesome. But, something happened. A new studio came on board, Retro Studios in particular, to create a brand spanking new Donkey Kong Country game called Donkey Kong Country Returns. And, I'm sorry, it's just not the same. Well, the environments are very lush and extravagant as always, and it's really cool to see the characters and new renders and detail and such. The gameplay opts for a more standard platform fare without much of the same zaniness or fast-pacedness of the original. Maybe it's just to pad out the games make them feel longer, even though the original still felt pretty damn long despite its fast pace. Or they just wanted to elaborate on new control schemes unlike, that are not like the original, which I understand. They don't want it to be too much like the originals, but you could have at least intertwined that with a fast pace or so. But, I mean, I understand the decision. It's just not for me. The same thing with Tropical Freeze, especially when it got ported to the Switch with the all-new funky mode. We all love the memes, but come on, you can't deny it. it's just an over-glorified easy mode. And it doesn't really seem like Donkey Kong's really gonna go any further than just occasional Donkey Kong Country games from every so often. 
like a lot of Nintendo franchises that aren't Mario or Zelda, they seem to have a very hard time to truly get new installments up and running, and when one doesn't do very well due to poor marketing, Nintendo just blames the game and just says, eh, whatever, we'll just forget about this ever happened, and maybe we'll see it another 10 years or so. Well, I've seen them just kill Chibi Robo for that exact reason, so... I'm hoping that one day there will be some kind of a retro throwback to Donkey Kong. Not exactly going for the 16-bit graphics. I mean, that would actually be kind of embarrassing, but it would be kind of cool nonetheless. But I'd like to see at least one, some kind of game use that similar control scheme. The fast-paced zaniness, the crazy, like, crazy visuals intertwined with the satisfaction of performing all these acrobatics. Even with this new direction, I could still, I'll still admit that I really do enjoy the original DKC games just on their own without any interference or knowledge that it's still going on to this day. And do you really need to be active on every new installment to be a fan? I don't think so. We still have our fond memories of the original and we don't, well, we don't need to wallow in it or complain about how all the new stuff is terrible. You can just enjoy it every so often and have a good time. And that's how I feel about the Donkey Kong Country games and the original arcade games too. And I'm sure some of you feel the same way too about some of your favorite video game IPs. I know a lot of people who enjoy Crash and only the old stuff and don't really care about the new stuff or up to speed about it. Same thing for Mario even, and he's like really popular. Or Ratchet and Clank, or Sonic especially. Um, okay, maybe I opened up a can of worms by saying that. But Donkey Kong is my go-to game. And even if there is like a new great throwback to the original games, I'm not sure if I'm really gonna buy it because the memories of the old is what I cherish the most. I don't care if there's a new game out of it or anything. At least not too much. Oh! Almost forgot about Mario vs. Donkey Kong. They're okay. Well, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this little throwback, or whatever you want to call it. And it was definitely fun for me. And I'll, uh... Take the time to thank the Patreon producers again. Reziel, Lee Fraser, Sophie Burgers, Azarius, and Tanner Kapischke. If you also want your name right at the end of every video of ours, then consider donating to the Patreon. Link is down below in the description. And I'll see you later, hopefully talking about um, something that isn't a video game. Or maybe you like this enough to where I'm going to talk about video games, but I already called dibs on Muppet videos, so you're going to be seeing more of those instead. Sorry!